Terraria is an awesome game, however, getting into it without any prior knowledge is extremely difficult. This game has thousands of items and hundreds of enemies and so many different mechanics it would take you hours to figure all of them out. To make your experience a bit easier, I have made this ultimate beginner's guide for players just like you, that want to get into the game, have fun and not die over and over. In this video I will be explaining everything you need to know when playing Terraria, starting with the character creation. When you create a new character in Terraria, you can customize everything about them, but that's not important for this video. What I want to focus on is what you can see here, the character difficulties. Here you have four different choices, ranging from journey to hardcore. For beginners, I would recommend no other difficulty than classic, so that when you die you don't lose all of your progress, just a bit of your coins, which isn't a big deal anyway. Now that you've created your character, it's time to create the actual world you will be playing on, and it's gonna be very simple. Just give your world any name that you would like, and choose classic difficulty. Now expert and master mode are just more difficult versions of classic, which you could play, but I don't recommend it, at least for your very first playthrough. Moving on to the next and final step. Here we have to choose a world evil. If you're unsure what this means, each Terraria world has an evil biome, either the corruption or crimson biome, both with unique and fairly strong enemies. Neither biome is better than the other, so you can pick whatever you like. Or even better, just let the game decide. You're not gonna miss out on anything, so don't worry about that. When you've done all that, you can click on Create World and you will be brought to a loading screen where you can see which biome the game picked out for you. In my case, I got the Corruption biome, so I will be fighting the Corruption boss and will be unable to fight the Crimson boss for a while, but that's no big deal. After creating the world, it's now finally time to start and play. When you spawn in the world, a guide NPC also spawns in with you. By right-clicking on him when you're close to him, you can talk to him and here you have a few options. Starting off with help. If you click on this, the guide will give you a few vague tips on how to proceed. But since you're watching this video, you won't need this option a lot. Then there's crafting. You can put any items into this little window here. And the guide will show you all crafting recipes that include that item. And that's everything you need to know about the guide. So, starting with the actual gameplay. The first thing you should do is chop down some trees with your axe that you got when you spawned. Make sure to always break the lowest part of the tree, because then everything above will also break. After you've chopped down a few trees, you can open your inventory by pressing escape, and on the left side you will see a crafting tab. Here you can make a crafting table. Once you place it down, you get access to even more crafting recipes, but you won't need those at the very beginning. Just make sure to turn a bit of your wood into platforms. And now what you should do is explore the world as much as humanly possible. Even if you die, it doesn't matter, so go explore the left and right side of your world and see what you can find. The platforms allow you to get over holes in the ground and stuff like lakes. When you go explore, you will likely find pots and chests scattered around. Breaking pots and opening chests will give you some good items, which you should keep. Also, feel free to mine any ores you find using your pickaxe. When at some point you return back to your spawn, you should hopefully have a bunch of items in your inventory. Most of these are self-explanatory, but I'm gonna specifically explain accessories. If any of your items show you that they're equipable, that means you can put them into one of your accessory slots down at the bottom right. Now that you've geared up a little, it's time to build some houses. To build a house, just build a few walls with some wood, place a crafting table, a chair, a torch, and fill the background with wooden walls. You can check whether you built the house correctly with this option on the right side of the screen. If you click on the house and it tells you that you missed something, you should fix that. This house will now be the home of one NPC, which will be the guide, since he spawns in with us at the beginning. 
Over the course of the entire game, you'll unlock many many NPCs. So just make sure you have enough empty houses for NPCs to move in at any time. Now that you have a bunch of ores and resources, you can craft a furnace at your crafting table and turn your ores into metal bars. Those can then be crafted into an anvil, the anvil being like a crafting table for things crafted out of metal bars. So craft yourself some good gear and weapons and continue exploring. Your focus should be exploring the caves in your world to find life crystals. By destroying them and using them, you can increase your maximum HP by 20. And you can go all the way from 100 to 400 HP. If you at some point encounter the dungeon, which looks like this, just don't enter it unless you like being dead. So avoid it for now. Once you've increased your health a little, you're powerful enough to explore your world's evil biome. You'll likely notice that you cannot break the evil blocks with your pickaxes. That's intentional and you will need bombs to break them. Specifically, what you should focus on are these little things floating in the underground of your evil biome. By using bombs to destroy them, you'll get some pretty strong items like guns or magic weapons. But don't break more than two, because after breaking three of them, you'll spawn the boss of your evil biome and you'll die pretty quickly. At this point you should be so powerful that you'll be able to fight your first boss, the Eye of Cthulhu. If you have enough maximum HP in defense, the Eye of Cthulhu will randomly spawn at some point. At the beginning of any night, you'll see the status message that you feel an evil presence watching you. That means that the Eye of Cthulhu will spawn in a few seconds. For this fight, just make sure that you can run away while attacking the Eye from a distance. If you take speed potions or have an accessory that increases your movement speed, the fight will be significantly easier. After defeating the Eye of Cthulhu, turn the evil ore it dropped into bars and make yourself some new gear. With that, a few potions and a few buff items, you can immediately go and fight your evil boss. Breaking another one of these orbs causes the boss to spawn and again, just make sure you have enough space to run away and dodge attacks and attack the boss from a safe distance. If you don't manage to kill the boss in the first try, that's okay. You can just try again a few times. Using the drops you got from defeating your boss, you can craft a pickaxe which is able to mine blocks in your evil biome as well as hellstone. To get to the underworld, just dig a two block wide tunnel down to the bottom of the world. To make this easier, press the control key on your keyboard once and move your cursor below you. This way the blocks you wanna mine will be automatically selected, so all you need to do is hold left click to dig down. On the way down, try to get some water to flow towards lava, which will create obsidian. With the obsidian you can craft obsidian skin potions that allow you to swim in lava without taking any damage. Those are essential, so don't forget them. If you're unsure on how to make these potions, you can simply ask the guide NPC. Using your pickaxe in your new potion, go down to the underworld and mine as much hellstone as you can. And also pick up one of the hellforges that are found in these obsidian houses. Craft hellstone bars with your hellstone and obsidian and make yourself some armor and weapons, preferably a sword and a bow. With this gear you can now go back to the dungeon. By talking to the old man that wanders around there at night, you can summon a new boss called Skeletron. After defeating Skeletron you can now enter the dungeon. Try to find a shadow key in there which opens the chests in the underworld that contain a lot of good items. The next boss you're gonna wanna fight is Queen Bee. She can be summoned in the underground jungle, where there are huge beehives containing her. By killing her, you will get a lot of bee-related items. Most of these aren't very useful, but make sure to keep the bee grenades, as those are extremely important for the next boss fight. Your next step now is going to the underworld and building a huge bridge at least 500 blocks long so that you can walk on it while fighting the next boss. If you think you're done building your bridge, you still have about 300 blocks to go. Trust me, you can have a bridge too long. If you encounter demons holding a doll while building your bridge, make sure to kill them and pick up the doll before it falls into lava. 
Once you've finished your bridge and gotten ready to fight the final pre-hard mode boss, go to one edge of your bridge and throw the voodoo doll into lava. This will spawn the wall of flesh, your strongest boss so far. The wall of flesh will move towards you and constantly speed up. It does a ton of damage so you better stay away from it and attack it from afar. The bee grenades you got earlier do a great job of destroying all the different segments of the wall. If you keep running away and attacking the wall, the fight should be fairly easy and with some luck you will have beaten Terraria's easy mode. That means that now your game has switched from easy to hard mode and everything will now be much more difficult than before. You are able to fight many more bosses, new enemies will spawn, you get new materials and so on. Basically it's Terraria's second half of the game, which drastically increases the difficulty. And that's it for this pre-hard mode guide. Thanks for watching until the end.